Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I will be going over the new roadmap for Coral Island and breaking it all down. And before we look at it, I just want to show you what we had before. So this was the previous roadmap. Um, we made it through the feedback update, uh, the spring update earlier this year, as well as the summer update that just dropped. Uh, so next we were looking forward to the merfolk update, which we've learned is now going to be combined with the fall update dropping in August. So what we were expecting thereafter was the winter update, the end game update, the marriage and children update, the 1.0 release, and then multiplayer player along with some other, you know, post launch updates. So remember that. And then let me show you the new roadmap. That's it. There's no scrolling. This is the entirety of, of the roadmap at this point. We're looking at the next content update being the final content update before the 1.0 release. I can't believe I'm saying that. So for this update that's coming out in August, we've talked about some of the features in my previous video that are going to be accompanying that update, but there's even more. So Merfolk Kingdom Access, of course. Now, Merfolk Kingdom Access is a huge component. This isn't like... <laughs> This isn't just another little feature. Like, this is a whole new world under the sea. Like, there's going to be, you know, houses, potentially shops, all these different characters to meet and interact with, potentially quests festivals like this isn't just a small thing and we'll get back into this later in the roadmap not all of that is going to be like feature complete for the kingdom access here a lot of it's going to be coming later on in the roadmap but at least to start we're going to be able to go into the kingdom explore it meet some of the npcs you know maybe visit some of the buildings and such so this is a huge part of this update like this is like more than one bullet point in my opinion um more to be expanded on the diving feature i don't know what that'll be but i'm excited uh diving to the 30 meter and 40 meter depths so y'all are going to be able to get your gold and osmium kelp organically which is going to be so awesome plus who knows what else we're going to find down there uh the ocean caves are going to be implemented at least to some extent right now you can enter them you can clear trash uh that's about it so there's going to be a lot more to it it seems the spooky festival. You know what? Get ready for spooky season in August, my friends. Maybe even earlier if they have a beta for this update. And I'm a spooky girl all year round. I love spooky stuff, so I'm ready for it at any time. Uh, deep forest accessible. So this is super interesting. I think the deep forest is considered like where the dig site is past the cavern because I would consider the ginseng area to be like the mid forest. So I think that's what the deep forest is going to be. I don't know if that means we'll have access to the dig site or not more game progression very vague but something's coming and then yeah of course the decor which could just be the merfolk furniture and i'd be happy with that there could be more we don't really know right so this is a huge huge update you guys so then yeah the next projected update is the 1.0 release I am like literally still in shock about this. Uh, we don't know when it's gonna come. So I mean, we might not be able to expect that in like a two to three month window. You know, potentially by the end of December, like there's a potential for that there. Maybe early January, February. Like, I don't know how long it will take them. I don't know how far ahead they are on this stuff, right? But I wouldn't expect this to be like, you know, a two month later or three months later, like what we've been experiencing so far with the updates. A full release is a big deal. Like this is something that they're probably going to announce a, a release date for, I'd imagine, and you know, hype up and Humble Games, their publisher will be involved in it and all that. So let's take a look at what we can expect for that. Uh, that one's gonna include the winter outfits as well as the winter fair festival. So excited for that one. Uh, so then we're gonna have, you know, all the festivals for the year. We're gonna have two per season. So that's a fun final one to be added. We're going to have 10 hearts for all NPCs. So that is the max level of hearts. Then we'll also have like the winter world set dress. We know that the winter environment was the most work in progress of all the seasons. So they're definitely going to be polishing that up. And I know it's going to be even more beautiful than it already is. More to the story quest. So story quest part three. We definitely have a lot of story still to be implemented. Um, you know, nothing really has happened with Pufferfish since they moved in. We have gotten a lot lot of story with 
the giants. But definitely I think we need some follow up on Pufferfish, maybe some more progression with like the town rank specifically and how that, you know, evolves the town. Maybe like the ramen shop opening up, like things like that, right? Like maybe those are some of the things we can expect to see. But you know, the story is basically a mystery to most of us. We've speculated a lot. So just getting more of it is going to be awesome. Even more decor, you guys. Like when all is said and done with this game, you're going to have so many options for both fashion and design. You're not going to know what to do with yourselves. Adoptable pets will be implemented. Don't know how I'm going to choose. No idea. Marriage will be implemented. You know, the thing I think a lot of you are waiting for will be here. Uh, you will be able to marry an NPC of your choice. And it will be really interesting to see how marriages differ from NPC to NPC, if at all. And you know what the post-marriage events will be like and all that. I don't know if that specifically will be in the 1.0 release or if post-marriage will come later. Children will be implemented as well as the Founders Hall, which is for those of you who were able to back at, I believe it was the $300 tier on the Kickstarter. You got a statue of yourself in the museum, in the basement, so that'll be implemented. Achievements will be implemented. I don't know exactly if these will be in-game achievements or like Steam achievements. It could be both. I'm not sure. So that'll be interesting to see as well. And then polish on all the festivals. So there were some festivals, right, that we've played through that are definitely more finished than others. So they'll be, you know, getting all the festivals up to snuff with each other and making sure they're complete before, you know, the full release. And then any Kickstarter rewards will also be delivered. So for example, if you have a mythical pet that you're waiting on or some cosmetics, that sort of thing will be delivered at that time. And there's a little asterisks here. We'll get into that if you're waiting for like console Kickstarter rewards. There's a note about that. So then next, we're going to take a look at all of the features that are currently considered to be determined. So anything that the team is uncertain about when exactly they will be able to deliver would fall into this category. Many of the things listed here, the team has already said that they won't be coming until after the full release. So in terms of setting expectations, I would say to expect these features to be added post-launch, but if we happen to get any of them sooner, it'll just be a really nice treat. So first of all, island visits. So being able to visit each other's islands will come after the full release. Multiplayer, which is different from island visits because in multiplayer, you will actually be able to start a save file together uh, with another player up to four if they're going to stick with what they originally said. Uh, and then you can like build your form together, which will be really fun. There is also going to be the tourist system which i think a lot of us including myself often forget about there will eventually be tourism people that will come and go uh, it is supposed to be a component of the town rank as well it's supposed to be the fame category that we don't yet have it'll be interesting to see if they throw that back into the town rank or not i think it would make sense if they did and then this ties into that as well the backer npcs so for this one if you were able to back the kickstarter at i believe it was three thousand five hundred dollars then you would be added as an npc into the game. Then there is the Merfolk storyline that will be added. So this is what I was alluding to earlier where we will have access to the Merfolk kingdom, but there'll be more uh, complexities that will come later down the line. So for example, an actual storyline as well as Merfolk relationships. So keep that in mind, you know, just because we're going to meet the Merfolk doesn't mean you're going to be able to romance uh, and marry them just yet, which makes perfect sense because honestly we need to get basic marriage implemented on land before we start trying to learn how to breathe underwater so this is going to be much more complex <laughs> um for you know marrying and potentially having children so it definitely makes sense that this will come later down the line uh there's also gonna be even more story content uh, added post launch as well as spooky day npc outfits which you guys i cannot i need to know what all the npcs are dressing up as for for spooky day like i need to know i have so many ideas i'd love to hear your in the comments i know it is like june i know but i still want to hear what you would love to see the npcs dressed up as uh for their spooky day outfits uh, then there'll be children portraits which is really interesting right because we're going to be having children potentially with the different romanceable npcs and there's a lot of them uh, so there's a lot of you know combinations of features that could come from that but the children will have portraits and dialogue which is pretty cool so they're basically going to be like another npc in the game however i know we're 
we're all hoping that they don't act like NPCs, like NPC NPCs. We're hoping that the kids will have, you know, a lot of dimension to them, a lot of personality, um, that they'll do more than just kind of hang out on the farm mindlessly. That's what we're all hoping for. And I know that's what the team wants to deliver. So I'm really excited to see how they do that in like a realistic way for them. We'll also have children growing up. Now, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know if this is just for our children or for the town's children as well. So Archie, Oliver, Valentina, Zoe. It could be either. So it could be that they'll implement the children growing up for all children on the island at this time, or it could just be for our children. Uh, mind you, I think they probably would have mentioned kids growing up earlier then. Uh, and also Savannah Access. So that is the upper portion of Coral Island. That is like the new biome. Again, lots of speculation on this. We know that we'll unlock access to it by completing one of the altars at the Lake Temple, but we don't know much about it other than that. Uh, there could be unique resources there. Uh, there could be you know, unique NPCs. I actually am going to save the discussion on that specifically for a future video because I have a lot to say about it as well as island hopping, which I noticed was not on this roadmap at all, unless they meant island hopping instead of island visits. But I don't think they did because I, I, island visits would be like visiting each other's islands. Maybe that is alluding to island hopping, but they've never not called it island hopping. So it is interesting. I mean, personally, I wouldn't expect island hopping for a while. I think island hopping is going to be one of those things that gets added last because it was their biggest stretch goal. And then I can definitely see island hopping acting as a way that they're actively updating the game post launch so they could introduce like new islands periodically. You know, this month we're introducing the Arctic island that you can visit. Uh, you know, three months later this month we're introducing the city island, you know. So that's something I'm definitely going to talk about in another video because again, I have a lot to say about it and I have some stuff to show you actually about that. So that is the full breakdown of the roadmap along with my initial thoughts on it. Now, of course, once I sit with this longer, I might have more to say. <laughs> it's a little additional note that I think is important because this is for PC, right? Um, so if you're a console player or backer, they just want to reiterate that they haven't forgotten about it and that they apologize for not providing more updates on it so far, but please be assured that they're still actively working out the details. So they don't have anything to share right now, but they will keep us informed as soon as they have concrete updates. And then just the asterisks here for Kickstarter rewards. So if you backed Coral Island on Kickstarter and you asked for like a console key, you're going to get those rewards later. And I think this is important to know, like they recently gave a bonus reward for backers, the two sets of overalls. So if you back for console and you're like oh can i get that yeah you can get that they're just gonna send you the console key for that later on so don't worry you guys you're not gonna miss out on anything they got you and so on that note if you are looking to play on console when can you expect to play and that's really hard to say until we get more information but the best estimate i can give you is just basing it off of what the team originally said which is to hopefully expect console versions approximately six months after the full 1.0 version is released so that would be this version here so say we can expect 1.0 release by maybe the end of december okay let's think like optimistically so then you could be looking at playing coral island on your switch playstation xbox maybe by june of next year so like one year from now now again, that's just a complete estimate. We have no idea when this 1.0 release is coming. I'm just assuming that it's going to be longer than the two to three month update window that we've been seeing because this is a huge update. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know when you think we can expect to see the 1.0 release. Um, and let me know like what out of this, if you can possibly pick, let me know what you're most excited about. And that's all from me for today. I, we still have so much to talk about. So make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on for more videos covering everything coral island you know i always have you guys i will always deliver the news as soon as i can <laughs> once it drops so with all that being said thank you so much for watching i love you all and until next time take care and a very special thanks to meredith or modus tansy cisco cheese divine raven blossom james paul jack vladiator and danny my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible and means the world to me.